Tuesday, January 14th, 2020, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, I'm going to talk about the day uh, I realized our monetary system was not fit for purpose. It was like my eureka moment. Uh, I had already, of course, uh, started accumulating gold. I had started reading about the system, but uh, that moment really convinced me uh, that uh, we're not uh, in a safe system. Uh, we're not uh, uh, protected by leaving our uh, hard earned savings in the bank because the banks, of course, are part of the system as well. So I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to quickly look at the markets uh, before I go into it. My eureka moment, so to speak. Uh, I'm having uh, my coffee today in my new end of Fed design. It's a little uh, a simpler design. Uh, I did it myself. This one here and the Fed. It's in the uh, Maneco 64 Teespring store if you're interested. There are other uh, merchandise there as well, mostly mugs, t-shirts, Billy uh, silver bug mugs. <laughs> Some of you might not know, Billy uh, likes silver. Uh, there is an old saying, uh, and that saying still applies. And that's one of the reasons why they don't want people involved in gold. The saying goes, gold is the money of kings, silver is the money of gentlemen, and paper is the money of slaves. So before I go into my Eureka moment, then, as I said, let's look at uh, the markets, where they are this morning. It's 7.37 a.m. London time, of course. Uh, we've got gold and silver. They were hit quite hard uh, on the open, <laughs> the COMEX open, uh, 6 p.m. New York, the overnight session. Uh, and uh, it's weird because I have looked at the charts and where the other markets were, uh, markets were doing nothing, all the other asset markets. But uh, as I said, gold and silver uh, had, well, especially gold, had moved up very quickly from around 1480 all the way to 1610. It's normal that we see some consolidation uh, arrest uh, for gold and silver before they move higher. I'm not concerned. That's the other reason. Uh, another reason why <laughs> when gold was made uh, legal to own again in the U.S., they uh, also started the COMEX gold futures contract to make gold seem very risky and volatile to keep people uh, off gold. In the long term, we know, though, that uh, precious metals, gold and silver are the most stable store uh, of value, especially gold. So right now, Gold is at uh, 1542. It's down about six dollars. Range has been 1550 to 153572. So we've made a new low uh, compared to last week, which was at 1540. Silver got hit particularly hard. Uh, it got down to 1767. Now it's at 1775. It's down 20 still. So not a great. Uh, overnight uh, session for precious metals at the moment. I guess it gives you the chance to uh, accumulate a little cheaper with a little less fiat. Uh, the Dow is down 20 points. Uh, S&P is down two and the NASDAQ 100 future is down nine. Sterling continue to weaken. Yesterday, uh, I said sterling was down quite a bit. I hadn't seen the reason for it. And it, some people were attributing it to a comment by one of the uh, members of the Bank of England, MPC uh, members. And I saw the story over the weekend. Uh, he said uh, that uh, he would think about cutting if the numbers remain weak. If he doesn't see any improvement, he expects uh, to cut by the end of January. I think there's a meeting at the end of January. There's already been two members of the MPC uh, that in the last uh, meetings voted to cut. So I think that's one of the reasons why sterling is down. Um, the other one being that, uh, as I said, <laughs> I think it was last week, uh, they're going to keep uh, rates very low. They're going to uh, 
keep uh, spending fiscally. We saw that uh, the current government issued an extra 14 billion of guilt uh, uh, for this fiscal year that ends in March. So that that was quite a big move. So yeah, sterling will remain weak, uh, not only versus precious metals, gold, but also other fiat currencies. Um, Euro uh, unchanged, 111.40. The dollar uh, is un up a little bit against the yen at 110.03. We had a big uh, move uh, down in the dollar versus the Chinese U1. I think we got down to 686 uh, yesterday and today we've been at those levels. There is a headline um, or story saying that uh, the U.S. is taking China off the uh, currency manipulator uh, list or, and uh, that they're expected to sign, well, it should be tomorrow, they should sign uh, a phase one trade deal. It, it's funny how the headlines say they're going to sign the trade deal, but it's not. <laughs> and I would also argue, as I've always done when I talk about this, that the original not even phase one, but the original trade deal, the whole <laughs> nine yards was supposed to have been signed on March 1st, 2019. Here we are, uh, January 15th, tomorrow, 2020, and uh, they're going to sign phase one, not the whole trade deal. And I'm not even sure that they're going to sign it tomorrow. So there you go. They keep delaying it. Um, crude oil uh, still... Uh, under control right now, it looks like the Iranian situation has kind of gone off the radar. So uh, WTI is at 58.02, down sl uh, slightly. And uh, Brent is unchanged at 63.84. To finish off the bond market, uh, the U.S. 10-year yield is at 185. So it's fairly stable as well. Uh, I'll just quickly look at the U.K. yields. <laughs> Uh, because they're really um, not protecting investors. People who want to invest for the long term in something safe uh, can't even do that. Right now, the 10-year gilt yield is less than 1%. It's at 0.732%. Um, <laughs> considering that uh, the cost of living is probably rising by 5 or even more percent, uh, even putting your money in the bank or lending it to the government is a bad proposition. I've done a little calculation here. Uh, impact of inflation on savings. Uh, and this is uh, interesting because today we also get uh, what they call inflation. <laughs> what I tell people is the consequence of inflation, which inflation, of course, is the increase, abnormal increase of money and credit resulting in higher prices. So this is what it should be, uh, the price data. But they call, call it CPI, they call it inflation. Uh, well, CPI in the U.S. is expected at 2.3%, and they're worried about low inflation in the U.S. Uh, or low rising prices. Uh, so I've done a little exercise here, impact of inflation calculator. So... If you have $1,000 um, in fiat, in Federal Reserve notes, you keep it for five years and you have a rate of inflation of two and a quarter, which is pretty close to that 2.3. Uh, I couldn't get 2.3 here in this, uh, in this uh, calculator. It means that in five years time, your $1,000 will still be there. Uh, that's how they trick people. Uh, they say, oh, inflation is really low. So they think that their uh, money is holding its value, but it's not. It's only going to buy you $894 uh, of goods with those $1,000. And it's probably even less because we know that they tinker with the numbers, with the, inf with the CPI numbers. Uh, uh, Shadowstats.com uh, talks about this. John Williams, how if you calculated CPI, how they did Back in the early 80s, it would be more like 5 or 10%. So let's go to my uh, Eureka moment now. Uh, this was uh, around uh, 2003 or four, I think. 
I started looking into the monetary system, into uh, gold, into uh, money back in 2002. At the time, I was still working uh, in the city of London. I was working for ABN Emerald Bank in their futures department. Their office was in um, Bishopsgate. Uh, yeah, there's 250 Bishopsgate, the main uh, building, but we uh, moved there before that uh, ABN Emerald, uh, the whole ABN Emerald uh, group went into 250. I was in 199 Bishopsgate. Uh, when I joined, in, uh, it was 1997, I think, or 98, we went to 199. The 250 uh, ABN Emerald uh, building wasn't even there. <laughs> there was a diner there actually. But anyway, uh, one day I went out for lunch, get some lunch at Liverpool Street Station, which is very near. And uh, after I got my lunch, I was putting my change back in my wallet. And uh, for some reason, I, I just took out a 20 pound note just to put the 10 pound or five pound note uh, in front. <laughs> uh, that's I like to uh, put my notes like that, 5, 10, 20. Uh, and I took out the 20 pound note and, uh, for some reason I looked at it and, uh, there's a 20 pound note and I looked at it and I looked at under the bank of England, because this is a bank of England promissory note. Uh, it says here and I'll read, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of 20 pounds, right? And, uh. There's the chief cashier's signature. There, there's what it says. It's very small, of course, but it's there. So I thought to myself, uh, what are they promising to pay? I realized actually, uh, even though I had seen uh, this uh, uh, statement or promise before, I hadn't really put two and two together. And I told myself, uh, this is a vestige of uh, the days when this country was on a gold standard uh, prior to 1914. 1914 is when they suspended, uh, uh, how can I say, exchanging one of these for uh, sovereigns, for gold. Uh, but uh, why would they keep it if we're off the gold standard? Well, I think it's to try to uh, <laughs> fool people into thinking that we're still on the gold standard. Uh, and believe me, some people do think we are on a gold standard still, and they don't understand what it really means. But uh, yeah, it's just a, a, a hiding in plain sight. The fact that uh, they're dishonest, in my opinion, <laughs> to put a promise there that you can't really get. Uh, so you could, of course, go to a bank, any bank, and exchange that for 20 uh, sovereigns. You can't anymore. And on that day, I thought to myself, um, yeah, this system is irrevocably uh, unsound. It's broken. It's not safe. And that convinced me. That was my eureka moment. <laughs> Just going out for lunch, getting my lunch to go back to the office. Uh, we didn't, most of the time we went to get a sandwich or something and bring it up to the office. That's how it is in the city. Rarely did we... Did I really go out with clients for lunch? Most of my clients were uh, in Europe, in the continent, some in the States, some in the Middle East. So I did meet them, but uh, not regularly, of course. So that was the day. Uh, so uh, I've got here some old uh, notes, for example, uh, promissory notes. This is a United States of America uh, note, this certifies that there has been deposited in the Treasury of the United States of America one silver dollar payable to the bearer on demand. So <laughs> this is how it used to be. Uh, this is from uh, 1923. There you go. There's a silver dollar. That's a real uh, legitimate uh, promissory note. Of course, this... Uh, happened. Uh, this took place before they uh, took silver off the monetary system back, I think it was 1964. So I bought this uh, at Stax. It's a good uh, a numismatic uh, coin shop in New York, uh, Stax. 
let's see. I've also got here. Uh, this is a little uh, older. This is from 1935. Sorry, I had to. Can't see very well. These are very focused, but sometimes I need to adjust it. This is another silver certificate. Uh, same as the other one, but it's a little smaller. Uh, $1 in silver payable to the bearer on demand. There you go. Another one from Stax. And now the euro. <laughs> euro uh, at least doesn't promise to pay anything. It's just a piece of paper with a number and the initials of the ECB in different languages. So there you go. There's the five euro note. Uh, at least it doesn't promise anything. At least it doesn't uh, pretend that it is a promissory note. Uh, yeah, so that was the day that I realized uh, the system was broken and that I had to protect myself outside the system. Am I advising you uh, to do that? As I always say, do your homework. Uh, don't take my word for it. If you really interesting in knowing what's going on do the homework do the research it's very easy these days uh, on the internet you just have to google things or search for things and uh, you will uh, find the answer but one thing you shouldn't do is trust the mainstream media mainstream economists uh, I've got an example here of course which I've spoken about uh, this editorial in the FT in 2004 that I read and I thought uh, to myself, knowing what I knew, that it was pure pro propaganda. It's going, going gold from the FT. They said the pointlessness of holding bullying continues to sink in. That's when gold was at $400 an ounce. So if you had read that in the FT uh, and believed them, you would have lost out. You wouldn't have protected your savings. Yes, I do uh, reference the FT in my videos, uh, but I don't believe in their views. Uh, they, they do have good reporting about what's going on uh, in the markets and, and in the economy, and that's why I use them. I've got a mug as well, <laughs> the FT War on Gold, if you're interested. It's got a picture of that. I cut out that uh, editorial from the paper. I even laminated it and kept it. It's from this. So you could have a little piece of history of gold propaganda if you get, get that mug. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Please share this video far and wide. It helps. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, BitChute, DTube, and Steam it. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.